Today's video is made possible by our friends at EcoFlow. Welcome back brothers to the shop. I've got a fun video for you today. I was so impressed with the real craft reel that I ordered one with a really cool electrical box on there. Now, I got to thinking, you know, talking or expanding upon this concept of, I think in this current time in life that we need to be flexible uh, and you might need to make a radical change in your life. So you don't want the things, you don't want to put things, uh, I guess, money into things that you can't take with you or not going to help you in multiple circumstances, right? My shop doesn't have enough electrical plugs. There's only plugs on, on two walls and I'm always needing something out here by the main bay door. And I was just thinking, okay, well, I'll, I'll put plugs in and all that. By the time I pull electrical permit, you know, which is several hundreds of dollars, and then buy all the materials to do that and, and, you know, to put one plug in, why not just go with one of these reels that I can just plug in to a heavy extension cord at the other end and you know, run it behind the wall? Right. So if need be, I can take this with me. So that's kind of what I was thinking. And so let's take a look at it um, and then we'll I'll show you where I'm going to put it and why. And we'll just uh, we'll just get it done together. Here's what I'm thinking, gentlemen. We've got the reel over here that we put on last week. And that's working out really great. Got air for the to access the main bench here. What I really need is power inside and outside at the door. What we end up doing is using uh, that, I've got that electric pressure washer now instead of the gas and there's no power out there. So this will give us 50 feet out the door, plus it'll reach the whole inside of the shop as well. So here's what I'm thinking. We'll just kind of put this, unlike the other one, a little bit higher than my head so I don't bump into it. But just, I'll put it higher than this. I'm just gonna demonstrate, but we can clamp this on here. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's right here, but it would be up, up here, right? And then that's going to give us a power box that we can, if I need to, we're working on the bench, you know, a nice 30 amp circuit right here. And what's nice about these boxes, especially the, the quad boxes, is they sit flat and you can plug things into them one handed. You know, they're always sitting there and you can just reach down and plug and unplug. So it's really convenient for that. So basically, you know, your, your electrical is just going to be here for grinders and things you want to use. All right, let's lay out, uh, get our holes drilled, and get this thing mounted up. What do you say we clamp this guy up here? We don't need to make a template for this one. It's not near as heavy as that air reel was. And it's easily supported here by this vice grip. So I'm going to... Eyeball that, then we'll square it. I want the hole right at 80. Make sure it doesn't. We don't whack our head on it. Somewhere in right there. That looks good. We're not gonna hit our head. Let me check it for square. Just about had it perfect right there. Well, this is gonna be simple. We'll drill this with the mag drill as well. Man, this is going to be nice. This is a beautiful reel. I'm really happy with this stuff. I've seen the two samples that I have of the real craft stuff. It's 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 not cheap, but I don't didn't expect it to be. It's very nice quality so far. There's no end to the joy of using a Starrett center punch. <laughs> I bought it to stake my uh, castle nuts, my buffer tubes, and my ARs. But uh, I find that it's uh, worked its way into my regular rotation. Square, only chisel I have that doesn't ro roll off the table every time I use it. I don't know why I hit that one twice. I was just feeling a little uh, sassy, I guess. For being an impulse buy, this mag drill has been, uh, boy, it's been handy. I actually have a couple friends that have been borrowing it, uh, using it for different projects where they need to drill really nasty stuff. Here's a rule, or here's my policy with friends that borrow tools and equipment. Some things I just won't loan, uh, or I wouldn't loan to like my, my, my heavy equipment, I mean, there are maybe two guys that I would loan it to, and that's the only reason why is because they have their own and they've done it professionally. 
and they're fastidious. Whoops, I forgot the insert, uh, like myself. Uh, and I know, that's why they're my friends, I know they return something better than the way they, they received it. And that's, and that's what you want to do. If you haven't been taught, and a lot of people have it, when you borrow something from a man, if it's a truck, bring it back full of gas. If it's a, a trailer, bring it back with some benefit to him, either a gift or a wash it if it was dirty or, you know, whatever, you know, check the tire pressure, whatever. May, give him some benefit from loaning it to you. Um, but my policy, and you can adopt it or make your own, is if a guy's borrowing something for you, from you once, that's fine. He asked to borrow the second thing again a second time, that's fine. But if he has to borrow it a third time, that's when he needs to be about buying his own. That's kind of the way I look at it. And, I, and that would probably be my policy as well of borrowing something from another man. If I'm asking to borrow it a third time, then I need, need to be having my own. We are ready to put our drill up. I guess we'll start with the top. I've got my lanyard ready here. Just in case. As I said last time, if the power goes out, your drill falls on the ground, probably on your foot. I think maybe I had a better lanyard system last time. <laughs> that's going to get in the way. Yeah, that's not working. Let's switch sides here. I guess that would be the easy fix. This Kanipex, uh, these vice grips, I like these better than the regular vice grips because the, they, re they release easier. I have the hardest time releasing vice grips sometimes. It almost takes two hands and you don't have two hands. All right, is that better? That's out of our way. Okay. What a tool. That is quarter inch steel, guys. Quarter inch. Goes through as quick as wood. Our friends at EcoFlow produce some of the most innovative solar generators on the market. These solar generators give you the ability to have power on demand at any location, regardless of how remote, from outdoor adventures to just having a reliable backup system for your own home in case the power goes out. We are so dependent upon our electronic devices and being able to recharge phones and batteries and computers that having a solar generator is really essential in the future. And with the difficulty we're having and the expense of get rising gasoline prices, the solar starts to make a lot of sense because it's a discrete, portable way that you can have backup power in any location. The two products I've chosen to share with you guys this month is the EcoFlow Max and the EcoFlow Extra Battery Max. This is very exciting because it gives you the ability to build on your solar generator. I'm all about having things to be flexible and as modular as possible, and I would hate to invest in a whole house system that really just, I was really stuck with that and I couldn't use in other places. Anyone can pick this up and put it in the back of your camper and your truck and you've got power. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of which, the power just went out. The EcoFlow Max hits a really great sweet spot and it produces about 2,000 watt hours and it's definitely man and woman portable. It's very simple to put into the back of the truck. But this is the really cool feature. Now you can plug and play extra batteries, adding an additional 2,000 and you can go up to two additional batteries for over 6,000 watt hours of backup power storage. Check this out. 
the connector cable stores in a compartment in the top. Having the ability to expand your system that can kind of grow with you that you can increase over time is a cr tremendous capability. Configuring the additional batteries to the Delta Max is as simple as the master plug. Be sure to turn off the units before you do this. Now we can boot up the system and it automatically recognizes the battery and will manage that battery 100%. This is a good feature because basically we have just a standalone battery that we can add to the system and double it from two to 4,000 without having to pay for all the controllers, which we don't need, so it cuts down on cost. The layout on the Max is clean and simple, very generous number of plugs here. We've got our inputs. Here in the front, you have all your charging ports, a USB-C, and these USB-Cs are 100 watts, so these can handle our larger devices like computers that not all USB-Cs can do. These solar generators are legit. They produce a lot of power. Check this out. We're gonna hook up a modern laptop, which they draw pretty heavy, as well as a phone, and what's cool, is the EcoFull will adjust the amount uh, that's required versus the amount that's going in. We're currently charging, and it will step it up to compensate so that we're producing, we're bringing in 81 watts, but we're only coming out with 65 between the two devices. EcoFlow's free app is really good too. It connects to all your devices if you have multiples and you can monitor everything that goes on remotely, uh, which I really enjoy. You can see what your input is, what your output is, what you're charging with your solar. It's very clean, connects easy, no problems, multiple devices, it's very nice. The EcoFlow Delta hits a real sweet spot of good power and portability where it's gonna be really good for camping and away from the home, but you can still build a robust system for backup generator at your home if the power goes out. If you'd like to start putting together your own system, I'll put a link in the subject heading, go on over there, say I said hello, and get your system ordered now. Thanks for watching and back to the video. Now, some of you more observant gentlemen would probably say, why don't you take the cord off of it so you don't have to, goodness, I got my vice grips too tight, hold all that weight up. Oh no, I get to do it twice. But I would tell you that a professional homeowner doesn't get to the gym as often as he should. So any opportunity to turn his sloppy yogurt into muscle, uh, he should probably take advantage of that. Oh. All right, let's pick out some hardware. East Coast guys like, oh, here we go with the toolbox video again. Look, I may collect a ratchet once in a while. It was my birthday and Mrs. W asked what I wanted and I said, I already took care of it. <laughs> but I found this white one on eBay. Check this out. That's, probably, that's super, super rare. I've never seen one before in a white handle and I wanted just a standard 3 8 drive ratchet. I've got my granddad's, but it's pretty well just about had it. So I needed one this size. These guys here. And that will work. I don't think they're going to spin. I think it'll fit right in there because since the hole is oversized a little bit. And I think those are, what, 7 16 This is not the proper application for a carriage bolt. A carriage bolt is a bolt that has a round head on it that you can't get a wrench on with a square underneath there that's designed to fit into a square, basically a square hole. These are used in areas where you can't get to the backside to put a wrench on something. Uh, they're not perfect for this, but the fact that the holes over drilled a little bit, they'll pull in flush and they'll be just fine. Plus we've got the nice aviation nuts for the back. I get to use the new 3 8 ratchet here. Man, if you haven't used a snap on ratchet, even if that's the only thing you bought, I mean, I just can't describe it. You just have to, I mean, you just have to feel it in your hands. You'll, you, as soon as you feel it, as soon as you see it and hold it, you'll, you'll understand. Very nice. Oh, that broke. <laughs> I just broke that right off. My goodness. In addition to cat-like reflexes, professional homeowners have tremendous upper body strength. What do you say, gentlemen? Does it give you the fizz? Man, that is a really nice item. How useful is that going to be? 50 feet of cord. So in the 40 by 40 shop, it's gonna reach all points, all corners, 50 feet outside as well. And to have, uh, oh, actually we need to take that. Let's see if we can get that lid off. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll, uh, I'll give my final thoughts here and ideas. I have an idea for one of you to make a, a million dollars a, a business idea here. Just take my idea and go with it. Let's see what we, 
have going on here? What's going to be the best way to get this thing off? How skookum a unit is it? Well, can you imagine fighting that thing? Good grief, it'd make me nuts. Uh, so we've got a stainless steel pin that's just held, held in with kind of one of those disposable. I wonder if we could just punch that through without um, damaging the ear on that. Oh, I boxed myself in here. Let me get a punch here. We could also cut the plastic with a little abrasive cutter. What happens if we put a little pressure on that? I, wanna, I just don't want to break this ear off right here. If we just cut through these, then we could just sacrifice, sacrifice that. Ah, seems like it might be moving. Whoops. Be better. Are we getting anywhere? I see. It's just a little one of those little caps. I think it's actually going. It wouldn't be a bad idea to support this ear when I'm pounding on it, actually. But that might mar the plastic, but I don't have three hands, so that's just not going to work for us. We will soldier on. We getting it? Yeah, we got it. There's a remnant. Got a nice little pin with a spring in there. You know, maybe the best thing to do would be just to take the spring out. <laughs> it wouldn't be any point, it wouldn't stay open. All right, should we cut that ear off or just leave that on there? It is reversible what we just did. We would just need to put a, a little keeper on the end of that, and I think I even have some of those. Ah, we'll just leave it be right there and go with that. But if that GFI starts acting up, giving me trouble, it's going to be gone. I am just tickled with this. Good winch, lots of power. Not like those crummy vacuum cleaners that won't suck up their own cords. This is what happens when men build things for men, right? Put some power into it. All right, so for my million dollar idea, industrial magnets on this thing, huh? How about you got your cart, right? Roll around, you need power on there, boom. And magnets on, like maybe on uh, like three sides, on both sides on the back. Put it on your workbench, you come over here. Like if you have a workbench like this that's in the middle of a room, like an island type, you know, you, unless you come up from the floor and you've thought about that when you've built, you can't really do that. So you have an option of having your cord on the ground or you could even put one of these reels overhead and just have the thing dangling. You know, that would be nice too. Uh, I could have done that as well. I just didn't want to get scaffolding out and, and deal with it, to be honest with you. Uh, but this will work. But if the, with the magnet on there, when you come over and you need power on your bench for whatever, you know, most of us are going with cordless tools now. So the need for all of those power plugs you know, 20 years ago, just it really isn't there anymore. So this, I mean, really a guy could get away with, if you had one of these in your shop and you might even cut this off and do like the master plug like I did, put a steel quad plug on there, man, that's a pretty off, awesome deal. And you can even put, like I did, I put two USB plugs in one of those. So if this is magnetic sitting on your bench, now you can ch charge your phone as well because we all need you know, USB chargers. But I'm, I'm tickled with that. And the other thing is, you, you know, rather than spending the, the $300, $400 on wiring and supplies, and you know if I would have went to my local hardware store, just if I had to buy 50 foot of wire, and I mean, it would have been exceeded the cost of this. And then you put it into a building if you're not going to be there permanently, you know, there, there's that too. So I'm not saying it's a complete solution, but just an idea. Because I like now that money I spent on this reel, if and when I go to a new studio slash shop, you know, that's going to come with me and I don't have to tear stuff out of the walls or which I'm not going to do and just leave it and have to buy it all again. Kind of the way I'm thinking. Flexibility, brothers. We want to be flexible in these interesting times because uh, um, that's going to be the people that get ahead, the ones that can adapt and, um, and be clever and mobile and, and not tied down too, too, too bad. Goodness. Thanks for watching. I've got a... Uh, uh, party we've got to I've got to get ready for Mrs. W is having a big birthday coming up and 
I better get on baking that cake. I promised the sweet loaf that we will be making a cake together tonight, a four-year-old. Please keep me in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video. Now, East Coast guy gets mad. Now, East Coast guy gets mad. Now, East Coast guy gets mad.